Hey, Rocket, Rocket, Rocket needs to know that your calendar, your weekdays are off by three days from the time of Christ. Did you know that, Rocket? It's a true story. I don't think he believes me, but stay tuned. Good afternoon. It's me, Dave Reynolds. Um, if you're not familiar with my videos, then you probably need to go down here and take a look at the uh, some of the playlists that are there. Uh, most of the questions that I've been asked about um, regard in times prophecy and those kinds of things. I don't know why. It's just kind of so it's fallen to me to be kind of a, a hobbyist with this stuff but I, I've been studying it for a long time um, I've been interested in these things since I came to know the Lord in um, 1971 so that gives you kind of an idea of my age um, yes I am an antique so um, but today I'm going to um, unpack something that I have tried before, but I realize that because I've been at this a while, it's really easy for me to make some assumptions on things. And it doesn't help that um, the Hebrew calendar and the um, calendar that we use today, the Gregorian calendar, that was first designed by a team uh, put together by Pope Gregory back in the 1500s and um, it made some changes to the calendar so just I want to kind of give a little bit of a background for that and the reason why is because um, kind of you'll excuse the pun the holy grail um, for historians theologians hobbyists what have you um, for a number of years has been when is the year, when is the time of the Passover, the Passion Week? This is the time um, when Christ first showed up in Jerusalem at the very end, um, right before the cross, and then closes out the week with his resurrection. When is that? I'll probably do a paper at some point later, but I think the main thing I want to do is I want to discuss for you, with you, some of the calendaring issues and some something that um, that I discovered um, that really complicates things. So I thought I'd walk through this with you. And maybe as I walk through this with you, um, it might help me talk it through and clear it up a little bit in my mind and make sure that I'm approaching it correctly. And you can make comments below if, if you have um, corrections or you see something that I'm getting wrong partic particularly the Hebrew feasts and how that works out, some of the calendar things, it can get a little complicated. And and um, so I, I apologize in advance for that. I'm not trying to make it complicated. Um, and maybe it's just me. It's, it's, some of it seems kind of complicated to me. So um, let, me, um, let me begin kind of this way. Um, and we'll take a look at this and uh, you can maybe kind of help me out with um, a couple of questions. But what I want to do is I want to look at these um, uh, seasons that we have here and how we got our calendar and where the confusion is. So let me, let me lay that out, hopefully in a clear way. A lot of people have ended up on the date of um, on the Julian calendar. What's the Julian calendar? Well, it started about, I think it was 45 years before Christ. Um, and it's a, a Roman calendar. And we had it for a couple thousand years. We had it up to um, 1582 when the Gregorian calendar started. Pope Gregory saw that, noticed that there's some drift in the calendar. Because you know a day is not a complete 24-hour days. A year really magnifies this in mean, years. 365 points, something or other. And so over time, um, the years fall out of plumb. The years um, drift and the dates kind of get messed up and things start sliding a little bit. And 
because it, it's not real precise. So they came up with a, a pretty good plan as far as that goes and how to divide the year in a way that keeps the days from drifting too much. So that's one issue. So they, they came up with this in 1582. And um, it was a partial rollout, though. Only part of, I, I believe it was Europe, and I'm not sure who else um, was following this in 1582. And I'll, sh I'll share a little bit, and I'll, I'll show you some calendars how this came about and some of the problems it created. And so the Gregorian calendar is the calendar that we use now. But how we got here kind of created a mess just drove a big wedge in and, and kind of made a bit of a mess. Okay, so that's part of it. So the Julian got changed. When you look back before 1582, um, what you've got to do to stay accurate is you've got to look at the Julian calendar, which is a, a um, Roman calendar that was um, put into place. It was a seven-day-a-week calendar um, before Christ. It's a seven-day-a-week calendar, just like the calendar we have now. Um, and um, the days of the week names match. Uh, Monday is always Monday, whether it's Julian or the modern Gregorian calendar. Tuesday is always Tuesday. Wednesday is always Wednesday, etc. All the way through Sunday, as we understand it now. I'm going to use those terms, even if that's not exactly the term and pronunciation that they used back then. Doesn't matter for our purposes here, um, because. When we look at it for us to comprehend what's going on in the past, we tend to paint it with terms that we understand. Um, you know, uh, there are different names for the days of the week, for instance, on the on the Babylonian and on the Hebrew calendar. Okay, great, Dave. Why are you bringing up the Babylonians and the and the Hebrews? Okay. Well, so um, back before there was uh, Abraham. Um, let alone the Jewish nation, Israel. There was the Babylonian calendar, and it was um, approximated a 360-day year and a seven-day week. And um, as the uh, Hebrews developed and developed their own system, they adopted much from the Babylonian calendar. In fact, even the names of, of, of some of the months are, they've kind of somewhat adopted the names from the Babylonian calendar. Um, the current Hebrew calendar that we understand for um, spring, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Nissan, N-I-S-A-N, not, not the car, um, N-I-S-S-A-N. Uh, the month of Nisan uh, wasn't always ca called that, but after Babylonian captivity, they had kind of adopted that name and a couple other things changed. And uh, so they adopted much from the, the Babylonian calendar because it made sense. And, and to be fair, the Babylonian calendar only matches what we got from descriptions if you count out months and the year um leading up to the flood and in the flood and then when the ark came to rest and all of that, you could tell that by the dating and the way it was described early in Genesis that it was um, that kind of a calendar. So there was a lot of date debate on, on that and there remains debate today. Um, some will use that calendar, 360 day calendar and say no. Um, you know, it's it is a, uh, a lunar solar calendar like the Hebrews used, but or like, like the Babylonians used, excuse me. But, um, you know, there's the, the Jews have always had a calendar that is more than 360 days in a year. It tracks the year according to the sun, which is true um, to an extent, okay? And... So why does that matter? Well, because when you're counting it out and you're trying to arrive at certain dates beginning from the past and going into the future and so far, you can get really confused. Um, I did for a long time, grappled with it, struggled with it. So anyway, um, come to find out, there is something they have recently found documents and 
carvings on, on little rocks, little, you know, almost egg-shaped, almost like a palm pilot kind of shape um, calendar that was like a pocket calendar that they carried around, had holes in it so that you could put a, a peg or something in it and count things out. And it was called the administrative calendar. And this is what the Hebrews used. Um, and it's what um, Daniel probably used, especially being the number two man for the for um, Nebuchadnezzar and so forth. It's probably what Joseph used for Pharaoh when he was um, planning things out. It's administrative. So they didn't at the time necessarily take a long view in plotting out a calendar and see where it's going to be 50, 100, 200, you know, 800 years from now. The administrative calendar was for short, short runs. Um, now what the Babylonians did, and in a different sort of way, a slightly different scale, what the Hebrews did back in the days, they would just kind of add months now and then um, to kind of even out the calendar and catch it up and keep it with the sun. Now, the reason why we have this this picture here, let me let me get my mug out of the way here. Um, that's that's not it at all. Hold on, right there. Um, Earth seasons. Now, this is where lunar solar comes into play and that is um, when you see up here at at the top up here um, that is the spring equinox or the vernal equinox this is when on the equatorial plane um, you get the uh, this whole thing here lining up with the Earth's equator and the way we circle the sun. It's the easiest way to put it. And there's an autumnal equinox, okay? Then there's the solstice. There's a winter and there's a summer solstice, okay? Here's the summer solstice. So they would, the lunar part or the lunar solar calendar, the lunar part is how the moon is um, when the months kick off. And, and the Jews always tracked this. So in other words, this up here that we see as uh, March 21, the first new moon marks every month off. Now, when we had this period here, the, the very first new moon, which is a little sliver of a moon, after the spring equinox marked off the start of what we know as Nisan 1. So that told us that on the 15th was going to be the Passover season, uh, unleavened bread, which really starts on the 14th. But you know, they count their days differently. And we see this, the reason why they count their days differently is because um, this is the way it was back in the days of, of Genesis from the creation. In the creation, um, it was it was the night and the day. So about sunset, as soon as the sun sets, the day for the next day changes. So um, when you've got, you're on Nissan 1, as soon as it's sunset, it changes to Nissan 2. And it stays that until the following same time of the day. They also mark things off by sunrise, sunrise um, as well. Um, that has meaning. So sunrise and sunset, okay? So they would mark off the rest of the months from that period, Nissan 1. And so they'd track the um, new moons from every month thereafter, but there'd be some drifts. So every once in a while, they would add on a month. Um, now, where that gets interesting is that um, a few hundred years after the time of Christ, they came up with something that, you know, we understand is the calendar. That's the Hillel II calendar. And what happened was this, uh, this calendar was designed so that there are several leap years. They will add in this uh, Adar II. There's already a month of Adar. It's Adar I. And on these certain years, there'd be Adar II. Confused yet? You can 
maybe you can see and appreciate a little bit where some of the confusion is. So anyway, I um, want to try to resolve some of those issues. And uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to do because um, they created some issues, as I said, with the Gregorian calendar. So we've got computers, fancy computers now, so we can um, go back with these, you know, computers and uh, calculate all these fancy days and things. This right here is where the month and the day first happened when Pope Gregory changed the calendar. Now this right here is Julian, Julian October um, calendar in 1582. So what happened? Well, what they decided to do to, to catch everything up is they decided to just redact the race 10 entire days out of the month. So this right here, you have the 5th of October through here, all the way through here, they took all those days out of the calendar. So the net result was, when they decided to do this, is they pulled out of this, I'm sorry, this right here, um, they cut all this out, all the way up to the 15th. So you see the problem, I hope, a calendar is seven days of the week, right? So it does. It, if they pulled out one whole week, it'd be no big deal because then everything would just be pushed up equally. Okay. But what I'm concerned with and what we're going to look at here is the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now, normally, if you just removed a week, those would stay the same. And if you just erased a whole bunch of days. Well, they didn't, that's not what they did. What they did was um, they decided it'd be a really terrific idea to catch everything up by um, pushing the fourth, dragging all of the past, if I can put it that way, everything from the fourth of October, the rest of the year, 1581, 1580, you know, get the idea, all the way, add an infinitum and drag them all up here through to the 14th. So that what you end up having is the 4th got dragged all the way up into the place of the 14th. So I don't know what happened to those poor people who had anniversaries or birthdays or some big event in those months. They just decided, well, you know, well, let's just go ahead and celebrate it this weekend as if we already had it or whatever. I don't know what they did. But anyway, that's what they decided to do with the calendars. Now, like I said, they rolled this out in a couple of different stages. I think the big sweeping one happened in the 1700s. But 1582 is when it started. And then the uh, other uh, nations and things adopted it, I want to say, in September of uh, the 1700s, 1750s, somewhere in there. So um, it might have even been like 1752 or something. I, I don't remember exactly. But anyway, you can look it up. I mean, it's, I'm, not, I'm not lying here. So what ended up happening, though, is um, what used to be um, on a Monday, the 4th of the month, okay, it got dragged up to being up here as a Thursday. So everything got dragged forward. Now, here is what the net result was what was on the on a monday right here is now one two three days forward monday becomes tuesday wednesday thursday three days forward into the future so what's the big deal well the big deal is that like i said a week is a week but then you got those awkward three days so it's not just a matter of numerically making the fourth go up next to the 15th what ended up happening is is that um, the days of the week remained fixed, but they dragged the dates forward. What that means for history, when you're going backwards, or the way you're looking at me on the screen here, okay, so for you backwards, um, because we're talking 10 days and not just three days, that when you look back, you're looking back 10 days, you're looking at the entire prior week. And so what this means is that if you want to 
for instance, um, worship on the same Sabbath day that Jesus and the disciples worshiped on, they have all just been pulled forward three days. If you want to do that on the correct day, you've got to go backwards three days. So they removed everything from the 5th all the way through up to the 14th, which means you've got to go in the other direction back three days to worship on the correct day or to, to um, worship on the Sabbath day. Everything like on the 9th would have been normally, you, you would think that that would be the Sabbath. Well, it just got pulled forward one, two, three days onto Tuesday. When we're looking back in time, then we're looking at the wrong days, the wrong days of the week because they've been changed. Um, for instance, you know, here is 33 AD, and this is what a lot of people picked as a good opportunity to see um, the uh, crucifixion before um, a Sunday and put it late enough in the week. So they found Nissan 14, and it looks like on the calendar, when you look back, which this would be the Julian calendar, it looks like it's on a Friday. Well, Friday doesn't work anyway because that's not three nights and three days in the tomb, right? Um, and that's a, been a popular belief for a long time. And that was brought forth even from the times of the Catholic Church. Because they saw in these Gospels, they saw that, that Christ was um, on the cross. And while he was on the cross, they were observing that they had to get him down when he died on the cross and get him in the tomb because tomorrow is the Sabbath. Well... There were two Sabbaths that week. Anytime you have a high holy day like Unleavened Bread or um, Yom Kippur later on in the fall, that's uh, another Sabbath day. So in addition to the weekly Sabbath, there are other Sabbath days during high holy days. So they mistakenly thought that um, okay, well, Jesus had to have died on a Friday then because they said tomorrow is the Sabbath. Well, they had that incorrect. They, because they weren't really um, looking at um, the Hebrew traditions. They weren't well-versed in Old Testament Jewish traditions because the Roman Catholic Church had written Israel off. They'd written the Jews off because they figured, well, the Jews murdered the Messiah, so God's down with them. Um, forgetting that God or ignoring that God um, is not done with the Jews, God is not done with Israel, that he promises to save them in their unconditional promises. And so um, God will not change his mind. Um, they will repent one day in the future. So neglecting that, they just neglected huge swaths of the Old Testament and didn't realize that uh, that should be a high holy day. So it could be on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Looking at the year 32, as you probably can see right over here. Let's see if I can get this thing. My cursor quit showing up for some reason on the screen, but you can see where the red rectangular is and off to the left, you can see the year. And here's the full moon. Um, Nissan 14 um, always follows a full moon. It's always on a full moon. Okay, that night will be a full moon, and it converts into Nissan 15. Because remember, sunset is when the days change. So it'll show up on these calendars sometimes uh, on, the, on the 14th. So, you know, by a day or so in that vicinity, it'll, it'll show up. Um, actually, it shows that at uh, 9.01 in the morning is um, the full moon. Well, nine o'clock in the morning, it's not It's not visible. It's not visible until that night. So that goes, you know, goes to show that, I mean, later on, I, I'll show you some, some um, movies. I can show this to you. Sunset's about, um, between about 6.30 and seven o'clock. Um, and that will be when um, everything there begins. And see, I've got some stuff that I'm clicking. Uh, if you look off to the left over here, it'll show the moon age 14 days old. So that's the 14th 
Nissan 14. And um, it's it's definitely going to be now I'll, this position will switch here in a second. In fact, I think I can manually do it and show you. Um, there's moonrise. And look at the moon. And uh, you know, we can get in closer. So with the naked eye, you're looking at that. And, and this is what they do is they would send uh, two witnesses up on a highest point and they'd be watching to find out when um, the full moon is. I, and uh, they'd be verifying it. They did that with the new moon, but they definitely would be counting how many days. And then they'd visually, um, visually take a look too and, and verify that, yeah, it's a full moon. I don't know that they had to certify these and, and get a priest to sign off on it like they did with the new moon. They went down to the temple and there was all this they had to do. Um, so here, see, we're... You're there within, it says that it's only, um, you know, 14.1 days waxing gibbous, but does that look like a full moon to you? So with the naked eye, it's like, well, it's a full moon. And then actually when you get over to the next day, there's a little bit of a, a shadow on uh, one part of it. So um, that's, that's how that worked. And um, so that's what they would they would see so it was waxing gibbous so that meant it's only 14 days and not the full 15 days until the following day but to the naked eye and this is give or take because these are all really good calculations but um you know over a couple thousand years you know a little bit of a it's not an exact science so when people say things like uh you know you use anderson's calculations and um when you go from um uh, you know, the, the prophecies about the 70 weeks of, of Daniel, and you go from the 69th week, um, where you want to count up to the 69th week. So you're going from 40, 445 BC, and you start counting um, upward to the time of Christ. Um, Jesus comes riding into town, right down to the day when, um, you know, it would have closed out the 69th week. Uh, and it's when um, he would have rode in, into town on a donkey. When really the prophecy, though, take a look at that prophecy and reread it. But it's it talks about and then he's cut off. So I'm not sure if if it's supposed to count exactly up to the time he rides into town or the time when he dies on the cross. But um, you can't be right down to the hour and minute like that. And in, in fact, it's even hard within a couple days to more than a couple days to get it exact like that because. Um, Anybody who who's telling you that is is uh, trying to sell something, maybe a book or something, but it's not it's not that exact over a couple thousand years. Um, let me let me show you some more here. Here we go to verify the day. Look at this um, fourth month. Julian calendar is fourteen, or is this the fourth fourteenth day in the year thirty two? Notice it says it's a Monday. Um, but that's because, you know, you're looking at, um, when the calendar kind of overlaps and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. When you go back three days, you end up with a Thursday, um, you know, full moon going into Friday, which is what we said, um, happens. Here's another way to look at it. Um, here's for the year 33 and part of the reason why it won't work because you've got one, two, two days, you know, I have three days and three nights. We already discussed this uh, about the number of Sabbaths. But here's for um, April 32. Um, this is interesting. This is only the, um, let's see, this is post-Gregorian. Now, this is this is what happens here. Is on the Gregorian calendar um, for April, this is overlaid upon this is a, Hebrew calendar, um, and this is the way it um, it looks like now because they've messed it up. They've dragged everything forward three days. It should be back three days. So the seventeenth should be, you know, one, two, three. It should be on Sunday. Okay. Um, when you when you look at Nissan fourteen, which would be the day um, 
going into Passover, this is the preparation day. This is the day Jesus would have gone onto the cross. You go from the 14th, one, two, three. It goes to Thursday. See that here? So everything got dragged forward three days. So this is post-Gregorian. This is what how everything got dragged forward. This is how messed up things are. Um, you know, um, this day here, the 16th was Sabbath day in Jesus' day. Um, but what happened was they dragged it forward. So now it's on Tuesday. So if you want to um, keep the Sabbath day today um, on the same day as Jesus and the disciples, you'd have to do it on every Tuesday because Tuesdays got dragged forward three days. Isn't that absurd? And at some point, I'm not sure where in history, but at some point, um, the Jews just went ahead and eh, kind of gave in to the days of the week. It didn't matter. we got to do it here on the seventh day. Um, so the 17th should be on Sunday. This is post-Gregorian. So you've got to go back three days to make it work. One, two, three. So that's where Nisan 14 should be. I, I kind of overlaid it here. This kind of works and kind of does not work. And, can, you know, this is a question for the class. Does anybody know the reason why? Well, um, let me jump ahead and tell you because some will know and some won't. Our calendar um, changes at midnight. Um, so we go from, um, you know, Wednesday night to Thursday. At mid we do this at midnight. Well, meanwhile, it's already been um, Thursday or it's already been, uh, you know, we could say not necessarily call it Thursday, but we could say it's already been the 14th for, um, you know, six, five or six hours because at sunset, it changed to Nissan um, 15. See, so that's the way it works. Here's another way to look at it. And I hope I'm not giving you too much of a headache. Wait, again, let me, um, let me do this. So I tried to overlay this. So here's nighttime. If when you look over here at these dark strips with the stars on them, I you know, kind of tried to do it that way for a reason. There's that the days don't exactly overlap. So anyway, um, when you look at the calendars, um, Nissan 14 will end up being on the same day as this here, kind of, on, on the Thursday. He goes to the cross on a Thursday on our calendar. So what happened was, is you've got, when Jesus sat down with the disciples and they had the Last Supper. Now, Last Supper is a phenomenon that was Literally, it's it's uh, Suda Maseket. It means the Last Supper. It's Last Supper every year. They have a Last Supper. It wasn't just Jesus's Last Supper. Um, it, and what it means is it's the Last Supper before a 24-hour fast because they don't eat from here right at, at sunset. This is when Jesus and the disciples eat. This is when Judas um, decided, you know, Jesus told him, you know, what you must do, do quickly. And he told everybody, you know, that if somebody here is going to dis, dis, is going to betray me. And this is where that happened. And this is where they, he washed their feet and they had their supper, Jesus's last meal. They don't eat. The Jews do not eat from here, the Suda Masechet, all the way over to Passover Seder over here on um, uh, the next day on Nisan 14 at sunset. Okay, um, so anyway, that that happened here, somewhere in here, Judas is going and, and betraying them. Meanwhile, the priests and so forth had been plotting against Christ this whole day, really. So Judas goes and goes, hey, I'll, the guy I, I walk up to and, and kiss, that's the one. So 30 pieces of silver, that kind of stuff. So they arrest him here at this time. It was still the wee hours of the morning. Here... Um, really before sunrise between, you know, this whole period here, Jesus is on trial um, and he's before Pilate. He gets condemned somewhere right in, in here at what would be, I think John puts it in the Roman time frame. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. So he goes to the cross, goes to the cross and then he dies um, here and he's got to be in the grave. He dies somewhere in here and then he's got to go to the grave, go to the tomb because the next day is going to be uh, unleavened bread. So it starts unleavened bread, you know, right after, you know, we get into there that overlaps. 
and we're, we're starting to now to um, get into unleavened bread. And really, sometimes, depending on who you talk to, they talk about the whole week like the whole week is unleavened bread or the whole week is Passover. And really, kind of, um, when you think about it, we, we do something similar. We do the same thing at Christmas, you know, because at Christmas, you know, we'll, we'll say it's Christmas the whole week, you know, because we're not going to work and stuff and we're fooling around and we're shopping and we're doing this and that and meeting with relatives and stuff. So it's Christmas. Even though it's not on the 25th yet, it's still, oh, it's Christmas. And they do similar um, to what we, we tend to do here. And um, so um, then here's the Passover Seder. That's um, when they, uh, next time they eat again is here Passover Seder at, at uh, sunset, just after sunset. And you're, you're in um, unleavened bread here, uh, or called matzah. And then um, this is the weekly Sabbath. You're getting into the weekly Sabbath here that we know as Saturday, uh, you know, sunset, that kind of thing. But it's also um, first fruits. First fruits overlaps. Now, Jesus, we say well, Resurrection Sunday, Jesus rose on a Sunday, and he did. But remember, uh, midnight is here on our calendar, the way we understand it. Midnight is right here. And he, in the wee hours of the morning, you're getting into just before sunrise, when the day would change for Israel, for, for the Jews, um, Jesus rose. And in fact, Mary went to the tomb, and it was dark. She didn't recognize him. She just kind of glanced over, saw kind of a shadowy form or whatever, didn't rise. She was talking to Jesus. She'd been crying. She probably had her head down, and just kind of looked over and saw the robe and the feet there, and didn't realize she was talking to Jesus until he said, Mary. And she looked up and realized it was him. Um so it was, it, was still, it was still dark. It's when the other women come to the tomb later on. You see, it's Sunday morning. And um, they're looking for him, and, and you know, the stones rolled away and, and uh, all this kind of stuff. So that all happened there. I just want to jump over here real quick and show you um, three different websites to show you I'm not, uh, I'm not smoking crack <laughs> and uh, how this works because you're going to shift from one day to the next right here at this time from the the um, Julian calendar. It matches um, Nissan 14. Um, the problem is, is that when you match these calendars up, it'll try to tell you that it's on a Sunday. So you'll look at it and go, no, you know, or, or Sunday, Monday, because of the way the Hebrew calendar falls. And they'll say, no, that can't be it because Jesus died on a Thursday or he died on a Friday or whatever. It had to be Thursday um, because Wednesday is too long. It's too many days. It's, you know, whatever, four days and four nights and Friday is two days and two nights. It's not three days. So it's got to be Thursday. And you can say Sunday. That's not going to work. But again, if you take Sunday and you, um, you count backwards, what you're going to find is you're going to go back three days. So you're going back Saturday, Friday to Thursday. So it's a, you're looking at a Thursday here. So this matches up on a Thursday. So that's one website. So this is um, timeanddate.com. And you go to here to these calendars and you can count days between dates and so forth. So it's, it's really a cool website. So that says it's uh, on a Sunday. It's when this date falls. Um, here's another website. And this one, if you look up here, core2, and it's dot. Uh, gsfc.nasa.gov. So this is a NASA calculation. Um, I already put the date in here um, that matches. Uh, it's uh, April 13th in the year 32, and it says it's a Sunday. Again, counting backwards, Saturday, Friday, Thursday. So it's a Thursday crucifixion on this date. Um, and that's from uh, NASA calculations. This one I really like calendar converter. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll try to put these down in the description below. Um, this is forumlab.ch. Uh, welcome to Forum Labs Calendar Converter. This page allows you to um, interconvert dates, a variety of calendar. Now, this is put together by uh, the guy who invented, um, I want to say, AutoCAD. And he's got a bunch of cool stuff on this website. But um, here you've got the Gregorian calendar, you've got the Julian day, that, where you can come up, this is a way of counting out the enumeration of the days, and um, the modified Julian day, 
it'll it'll come up with all kinds of numbers. There's the Hebrew month. So you calculate um, Nisan. Oh, uh, Nisan 14. It starts to convert onto the 13th. So what this is going to end up doing because of the way the day night thing falls is um, it'll also work that way. So what you're looking at, because the days won't match exactly because of, of how the days fall from evening to morning and so forth. So you can see how, you know, within that day, because when you get into evening, it becomes Nissan 14 and it no longer says it's the 13th. So this will be 13th still here, but by evening time, it's already Nissan 14 on this calendar, if you get me, okay? So when you go back um, to what I was looking at before, it all, you know, it, it makes sense because see, looks like it's um, 13th, but really it's the 14th by the time you get into the evening. Get into the evening, it's Nissan 14, it changes here to here. So sometimes it's easier to look at it this way. So we see we're going Wednesday into Thursday. And so that by the time you get into the um, evening here, you're already getting into Nissan 14 and it's, it's already um, Thursday by that reckoning. Okay, so um, they have the, the Suda Masekhet here. And there's John 13 too. You can look that up. It, you can pause this and look that up and to see what they're talking about there. And John 18 here, we've got the arrest going on. Um, the crucifixion happens later on in the morning. And the Passover lamb is slain at the same time that it, during this period here in the middle too. Um, as Christ is dying on the cross, the lambs are dying. And here they're being slaughtered all, all through the day. And Jesus is buried before sundown. And then we got the Passover Seder happening here. Um, so this is where you get into, you know, it's a high holy Sabbath day because you're looking at um, unleavened bread. You have the weekly Sabbath. Um, anyway, that's kind of another way to look at it. When you look back on the calendars, they will move the dates just fine and they'll compensate for the dates. But the days of the week, they have not adjusted yet. That, that seems like that would be a relatively simple algorithm for them to add on. And um, I've dropped a couple emails to some of those folks. I don't think they've, they realize that the days of the week, how they can impact looking back in history. So you look back in history and you're trying to figure out a specific day. And, you know, and what I was doing is I was using some calendars that were showing uh, the moon phases. And so you see moon phase, and I end up with the moon phase. It'll say Sunday. It'll say Monday. It'll say whatever day during the week. And um, and it just doesn't mesh. It doesn't, doesn't line up. So you wonder what in the world is going on. And then you realize that um, the days of the week have not moved. So they just attach it, the moon phases, to that date. And uh, the day of the week is incorrect. So uh, I think that's a key thing. It's an important thing. However much and accurate I'm getting these graphics, these um, slides I'm doing, and I'm still playing with them, trying to get them to line up just right. So I'm still kind of talking myself through it, and I'm looking at some Hebrew sources, as far as the, the traditions go, to make sure I've got them moving over the correct date and using these calendars. Again, you look at the Julian calendar and the Julian calendar, if you were to convert, I haven't seen a good one yet that converts from Julian calendar time to Hebrew calendar time and um, how that the time of the day here is this time of the day on the Hebrew calendar. So we it, I mean, if we get within a day anyway, I'm happy. And so sliding the days of the week is going to be really great. But um, it would also be helpful to have a calculator that would work with um, the times of the day going from Hebrew to Julian and from Julian to Hebrew. And that might be asking too much, but just roughly, um, you know, um, 
sunset um, is the same thing as, you know, it's going to be, um, it, it becomes Nissan 14, and that's the same thing as 6 o'clock or six, 7 o'clock at night, that time of year, 6 or 6.30 um, on the Julian calendar, for instance. So, um, but anyway, just some things to think about. You have to, because Gregory slid the days of the week forward 10 days, redacted, just chopped out 10 days, and then, you know, went and uh, pushed everything that way, dragging everything from what we knew before, everything from the past, pulling it all up by 10 days. We got that extra three days now crunched into the calendar forward. So now when we're going in the past to get land on the correct day of the week, what was historically the correct day of the week, what was historically a Thursday, you got to jump backwards three days on the calendar date-wise, not day-wise, day to match the date. You've got to go backward three days in the days of the week to find out what historically the correct day of the week was. So if Nissan 14, because they pulled it forward into, into um, Sunday, um, you got to take three days out and go, oh, there we go, this is Thursday. Now let me take a quick look. For instance, um, I've, I've, I've done some of these. I've done the math on some of these, and I've, I've taken these days. And um, here's how they, they come up. Um, the year 27 adjusted and I'm calling adjusted I've taken I've taken this the, the step backwards I keep forgetting which way the camera's looking and the way you're looking three days three hops backwards so um, the year 27 adjusted was really on a Sunday and then um, in the year 28 it would have been on a Friday so Nissan 14 does not work on Friday um, the year 29, it's a Wednesday. The year Thursday is a Sunday. So year, year 30, rather, not Thursday. The year 30 is a Sunday, so the year 30 doesn't work. Um, the year 31 is a Friday. The year 32 was a Thursday. And because we got, um, it changes, it's Nissan 13, 7.30 p.m., the day changes, so it turns into Thursday. It just works out that way. Sunsets, sunset always, um, full moon's always on the 15th for the complete full moon, but if it turns a full moon on the other side of the earth, you've got to wait till the next evening before it shows, so it's going to be visibly. But, um, you know, they can be visibly off. They weren't using calculations. You look at the glow of the moon, and go, oh, it's full to me, so they can be like a couple days where, well, it looks like a full moon to me, so they, they look visibly. So um, on in that year, you had sunset at about 6.30 to 7 o'clock, and you had moonrise at about 7.45 in the evening. It took a little while to make its way around. Okay, the year 33, Jesus didn't die on a Friday. The year 33, Nissan 14 is on a Tuesday when you adjust the calendar. The year 33 would never work because Jesus did not die on a Tuesday. Um, but you push those days backwards, and it wasn't Friday. Um, it was really Tuesday. So that year's out of question. Um, the year 34, though, was a Friday. But again, that's only a two-day in the in the tomb, two days and two nights in the tomb. Same thing with the year 35. It ended up, ended up being on a Friday. And the year um, 36 was on a Tuesday. So none of those years worked except for 32. That's the only Thursday. So um, don't take my word for it. Look it up. I'm going to compile all my notes, pull it all together. I'm going to finish pulling everything together and um, sticking a pin in some exact dates and so forth. And I'll probably try to, I'll, I'll try to get the graphics um, all nice and perfect because I'm going to look through and read through and talk myself through one day at a time and make sure I've got them lined up correctly the way it should be. Um, I'm not, you know, be patient with me. I'm not necessarily super great at this. Um, I'm just trying to read it for what it is and, and make the proper adjustments. But I think that three-day 
drift or not wasn't even drift no shift the three-day shift that Gregory did on the calendar is what makes all the difference in understanding a lot of this by the way it does have implications a lot of this calendar stuff does have implications for the 70 weeks of Daniel prophecy and the timing of all that I'm finding some interesting stuff here and uh, newer information this in the last handful of years there's been some more discoveries and some things dug up uh, archaeologically and so forth so it'll be really good to to um, bring all that information to bear on Daniel's 70 weeks so um, I'm looking forward to doing all that and um, and presenting that but meanwhile um, I hope you can make sense of some of the stuff I'm saying here um, and the things I'm showing on on the charts it's not perfect yet um, comments below let me know your thoughts I appreciate your thoughts so many of you I, I did a couple of charts like last fall looking for good calendar type websites I found some good ones I will be sharing the links to those down below and it really helps in uh, counting things and adjusting things so with that I hope you have um, a blessed day and uh, until next time